on this episode of Game Changers. Chris Zielinski is taking off! When you put good athletes in a place and you create the environment to run fast, he might break 27 minutes! There we go! Who knows what could happen? The game is always changing. In this series, we take a look at those who are changing the sports world on and off the field. I'm your host, Armin Amirian, and this is T-Mobile's Game Changers. Hey folks, I am here in beautiful Eugene, Oregon to meet legendary track and field coach, Vin Lanana. And I'm really looking forward to picking his brain about what he's done in the past and how he's planning on changing the game in the future. So we're here at Vin Lanana's place. I'll be honest with you, I was expecting a big Oregon flag or something in the front yard, but he starts off every day on his trainer, so we're gonna check in and see how everything's going with him. So you do this every morning? How long have you been doing this every morning? I missed two or three in the last 1,200 days. I spent a lot of my time on the phone. So this would be a time that East Coast stuff gets done and I work my way to the West. Over the course of Vin's career, he has established himself as one of U.S. track and field's most influential leaders. And when talking to people within the sport, it's easy to see why. What does Vin Lanana mean to like distance running in the States? Well, I think he is kind of revolutionary in that he took the sport at a point where we were struggling a little bit. And he was the coach and the administrator who kind of said, let's write this ship. Vin's success as the director of cross country and track and field at Stanford and Oregon catapulted him into several influential roles within the sport. As the president of Tracktown USA, Vin is spearheading the resurgence of track and field in the US. Let me put it this way. When it comes to track and field, Vin Lanana is a big deal. Tell me about your approach here at the University of Oregon. When I arrived at Oregon, the big thing, the big strength here is the history. And track is a big deal. This is one of the only places in this country where people will be glued to their seats until the conclusion of the event. For me, it's really important for us to transport that culture to other places in the country. You're doing a great job, man. And it's McMillan and Linkletter. McMillan, no, it's McMillan and Linkletter, the lead two for BYU. So how do you view your role in track and field in the States in general? What I'm trying to do is see if we can do everything we can to make the sport more popular sure. in the United States. We have the best team in the world. In recent years, the U.S. has had no shortage of competitive distance runners on the world stage. But that hasn't always been the case. Vin, what was the predominant mindset in distance running in the 90s? And what made you want to just completely turn it upside down and, and you know, change it up? The easy answer to that question is that we were getting beaten at, <laughs> at every level in the, in the distance races. And of course we had Joan Benoit that won the first marathon. But on the men's side, we had these marathoners. But then when you got down to 10,000 meters, 5,000 meters, 1,500 meters, we really didn't have people who hit the standard. When you got to the World Championships and Olympic Games, the rest of the world is aiming to win the race. We're aiming to just make it, which is crazy. The lack of success in American distance running did not sit well with Vin, so he decided to do something about it. It seemed bizarre to me that we would be that far behind, and we all believe that if we create the great environment, they will run the standard. So we looked at the track, looked at the facility, looked at the weather at Stanford, and we said, let's start an invitational. It's kind of like, uh, if you build it, they will come, and that's what happened. 
All right, here we go. This is what people have been waiting for, the 10,000 meters. What we did is essentially assembled all these great athletes, and we called the Peyton Jordan invite, shot the gun. Let them go in perfect conditions, and, and no one set them up like this. You, know, you had events like non sack and pen relays, but they would load up the field. They would not have pace setters. Oh, 13-34, guess who's right on pace? So we created an opportunity for every young man or woman who wanted to hit a standard had the opportunity to run in these races. Wow, out of a cannon, Derek Heath. Who's going with him? The racing's really going to start here. Lo and behold, in the last 20 years or so, that's where everybody goes to get their distance performances. I'd really love to take a look at uh, Chris Zielinski's 10K with you and get your take on it. Chris Zielinski, he's only had 500 meters between a win, a debut, an awesome debut, and an American record. What did Zielinski's performance in this race mean for American distance running? I do need to give Galen a great deal of credit because he put it on the line. Galen Rupp and Chris Zielinski going to duke it out over 1,200 oh. meters. The race was set up for Rupp to run them sub-27 minutes, and they weren't paying attention how fast they ran. They were just trying to beat each other. And he's going! Chris Zielinski is taking off! Was there any sort of idea that he was going to do what he did here? When you put good athletes into place and you create the environment for the run fast, who knows what could happen? That's why this meet was so magical. Chris Zielinski has taken this field and the crowd by storm defied. He might break 27 minutes. Stand on, Chris. Here we go. If Vin Lanana wasn't doing what he's doing right now and didn't do what he did, you know, starting Peyton Jordan, like, where's distance running? Well, was? I mean, that's one of those hypotheticals one doesn't know. But one of the sweetest moments I had with Vin was flying back from Rio with the amazing success that occurred at the Olympics in Rio in terms of the distance runners. And I had a marathoner who was uh, sixth place there as well, so I felt like he had benefited from some of these nuances that, that Vin had put in place. And one of the sweetest moments I think that we had is I just shook his hand and said, congratulations, man. You brought us back from the brink of extinction to an amazing Olympic Games. So what is it that drives you with your commitment to track and field? My opinion, track and field is the greatest sport in the world. My commitment during the period of time that I stay involved in the sport of track and field will be to be sure that it's accessible to the next generation of kids who want to do something as simple as run, jump, and throw at the highest level. Ben, thank you so much. Hey, it's a pleasure. On this episode, I got a chance to hang out with Vin Lanana, and while he says that he's just part of a greater effort to elevate track and field and American distance running, it's clear to me and everyone around him that without Vin Lanana, American distance running would not be where it is today. Join us next time for another episode of T-Mobile's Game Changers.